I don't know if you've seen the latest little um, fairly gross film released by the Home Office. It, it, a lot of the problems that are on the horizon, whether they're caused by coronavirus, whether they're caused by Brexit, or whether they're caused by catastrophic political leadership at the moment, they're going to get worse unless we start... <laughs> Unless, unless we stop fighting about stupid stuff. You, you, you know, we're fighting about songs still. We're fighting about desperate humans in dinghies still. We're fighting about statues still. We're fighting about ugh, grossly inappropriate appointments to the House of Lords. It's tempting sometimes to think that the government very, very deliberately keeps these flames burning because when the flames go out, then the focus shifts inexorably and completely to their chaotic handling of coronavirus and their responsibility for making us the first country in the history of the world to impose economic sanctions on itself. That's why I get slightly scared when I see stuff like the Home Office's film today about refugees describing lawyers as activists. You know, Trump's already gone with his talk of the radical left. It sounds very, very much like Franco's fifth column. I told you that they'd move from the enemy at the gates to the enemy within. I don't know whether you believed me, but history has taught us that if you achieve power by promising to protect people from things that don't really exist, in, in Trump's case, Mexicans, migrants, Muslims, if you achieve power by promising to protect people from a threat that doesn't really exist, you have to find a new threat quick. And the new threat is people who are American. Just as in this country, there is a sense that the, the, a lot of government policy is designed to upset a particular type of British person. People like me, if you will. People like you, perhaps. It's, just, it's, it's got nothing to do with meaningful change or with constructive uh, policy making and everything to do with what, what is increasingly being referred to as a culture war, which is largely just an old reworking of, of, of race debates. And that, that, when you look at the scale of the problems on the horizon, that really should concern all of us. And yet, here we are this week. How much newsprint has been dedicated to Land of Hope and Glory versus a, a woman who starved to death after being deprived of her right to work in Glasgow? <laughs>